my very great pleasure to welcome to the stage Vilya Sapoka, the Finance Minister of the Government of Lithuania. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Fantastically lively audience. I like this. <laughs> um, Minister Sapoka previously was at the responsible for financial services and markets at the National Bank, and before that worked for the Lithuanian Securities Commission, so ideally qualified to speak to a room full of bankers. So, thank you. Um, Minister, I saw recently that you were in Brussels signing a memorandum of understanding on something I've never seen before, which is on joint cooperation, uh, um, cooperation with the other two Baltic states, Estonia and Latvia, for the development of capital markets. Could you please explain what that is and what, what problems it was trying to address? And so let, let me start by saying that uh, if you are a fast-growing economy, if you are an innovative economy, just having stable, well-capitalized banking sector is just not enough. Bankers are, my apologies, but bankers are conservative investors per se. Of course, it's, it's very good for traditional business with uh, positive and stable cash flow. But if you want productivity growth in your country, you need additional finance resources. So basically, you need to have, other than credit, other financial means such as private equity, venture capital, uh, asset-backed securities, security, securitization, and many other products, crowdfunding. So that was our starting point. And being uh, the biggest country in Baltics, we initiated this project together with EBRD in order to have a bigger scale. Uh, in some cases, uh, we have very tough competition between our countries. But in this case, we decided that cooperation is a better solution. We will have a larger scale. Uh, investors will have better possibilities to manage risks and our businesses will have access uh, to, to finance instruments which are in line uh, with businessmen needs. For example, if you are a startup, if you are a fast-growing company, uh, basically you have no chance to get a credit from the bank. And it's okay because otherwise you'll have problems with uh, uh, depositors' interests. Therefore, we initiated uh, this project. And, uh, of course, uh, there are a lot of means uh, to achieve those results, but basically we need financial push uh, for productivity growth in our countries. And you mentioned being the largest of the Baltic states there, but to what extent is it also about the fact that three million... Yeah, the population, it's about critical mass as well? Yeah, so, of course, uh, we are not talking about uh, worldwide blue chips, but we are talking about uh, small and medium-sized companies. Uh, we are talking about fast-growing companies. We are talking about tech companies, either in fintech or medtech, biotech, energy efficiency. So, in those areas where we have a huge potential. And it's across the full gamut of capital markets from that sort of startup capital all the way to the bond markets? Yeah, so basically potential. our approach is that we should look to the company through the whole life cycle. Mm. And if we uh, now can afford to finance companies at mature phase, and in reality we need all other stages then, of course, we should focus on, on this part and less focus on, on, on that part where negotiating power of companies is huge. So why, why should we bother about this part? Mm. Yeah. That kind of structural reform is going to obviously stimulate the economy even further, but you've been very successful in the, the growth for the last few years now. But obviously relatively new to the Eurozone and growing significantly faster than the vast majority of the Eurozone. To what extent do you start to hit capacity constraints in Vilnius in, in the labour market or in the property market and potentially inflation? I think inflation is much higher than it is in the Eurozone average. 
given that you don't have control over monetary policy, what can you do about that? Yeah, so the main message is that if you are a part of the Eurozone or if you already packed your currency to Euro, so just forget about monetary policy. Mm -hmm. And if you, ha if you have uh, inflation higher than in other countries, if your economy is growing above potential, then you have the only one tool, credible tool, how to deal with that is uh, uh, prudent fiscal policy. So what we did in Lithuania, so uh, we did expenditure review of all major sectors. Uh, this allowed us to pool resources from those areas which are inefficient and ineffective. We set very clear priori priorities such as uh, reducing poverty, strengthening healthcare system, strengthening uh, regional policy, also giving additional resources and uh, to our national security, I mean 2% of GDP to in line with the NATO commitments. expenditure, and uh, we now we are in line with uh, NATO commitments. And the final one is facilitation of productive investments. So those are the priorities. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, money is not enough, but uh, when you uh, review expenditure, uh, I can assure you that money is not the problem. The problem is to set priorities right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You mentioned there the economy growing potentially faster than its potential. Is the economy capacity constrained? I'm thinking in terms of skilled workers or... or of course, there are some signs, but we're, we are dealing with that. And what to be mentioned in, in, in this respect that this expenditure review not only allowed us uh, to allocate sufficient re resources uh, for those priorities, but also we managed at the same time to reach 0 0.6 surplus. So this is, uh, that was done in order to push our aggregate demand down in, in order to avoid overheating of the economy. And one aspect of it that I'm thinking, I think I'm right in saying that of all the European Union countries, Lithuania has the highest brain drain, the highest um, diaspora leaving the country. I mean, as a resident of London, that's very clear. Can you address that problem? Is it, is it a structural problem for the economy? Yeah, to, to some extent, it is a natural process. So Lithuanians always were uh, trying to, trying to search for happiness uh, in the world, and so last last month, it was the first month when we have um, positive balance, emigration and migration. So this net, is mi net migration. Mi migration, yeah. Mm. So that is that is a good sign that people mm. are c coming back. Also, we use this uh, opportunity window in terms of Brexit. Uh, because people are looking for new opportunities outside because the station is not clear yet. And uh, now we are encouraging people to start their own business. To, it is worth mentioning that we introduced tax package and this tax package is the best at EU level in the area of new technologies. For example, you can deduct expenditure for research and development but by three times, you can deduct from your taxable uh, profit all investments into new technologies, and mm. basically uh, your profit tax will be zero. Uh, if you commercialize uh, inventions, then you will pay just 5% of profit tax. And so this package is, is the best, and uh, Lithuania is very quickly becoming a tech country, so sometimes I call uh, our country Litechnia, because we have not only fintech, we have biotech, we have lasers, we have medtech, we have uh, energy uh, efficiency uh, companies. So uh, 
basically, if you want more productivity, you should search uh, for those very innovative fields where you can use your potential, where you can use talents in your country and attract talents uh, mm -hmm. from the rest of the world. It's a bit of a painful topic of Brexit for me as a Brit, but that's creating... <laughs> <laughs> we, we used to think that we were um, the hub for a lot of the fintech kind of industries. You're seeing a positive benefit from that? Absolutely. So uh, any tech area is like a game of uh, uh, puzzles. So what we did, we put pu puzzles in place and looked what, what, what is missing. And basically, we filled those gaps. In the area of fintech, almost everything was in place. So Lithuania is number one in ITC. In Lithuania, we have the fastest uh, internet, fastest uh, uh, public Wi-Fi. So almost everything was there. Many people working in uh, IT industry, universities are preparing students for, for, for that area. Uh, many big names like Barclays, Western Union, NASDAQ, uh, and other Scandinavian banks, they uh, have already their uh, back offices uh, in Vilnius or, 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 or in Konas. So what we decided that if, you, if we review our legislation, if we make our licensing process quick, if we al allow non-banks non to access central banks' money for, for transactions, if we create new commerce program, if we attract people working in blockchain industry, then we can become uh, a center for fintech, not only in the region, but in Europe. And it, so, a short period of time, uh, just a, a bit more than one year, proved that we can be successful. Now, uh, payment institute, num the number of payment institutions uh, tripled just in one year. Now we have uh, now more than 100 new uh, fintech companies in Lithuania. Uh, so we have companies established from Israel, from Hong Kong, from the United States, from other countries. And uh, we are constantly reviewing our legislation and re removing any kind of barriers for, for this sphere. Our central bank, which is at the same time as supervisor and regulator, is supporting our initiative. And of course, there is a risk because mm -hmm. when you have innovations, uh, it is a huge risk. But you can uh, pretend uh, that there is no risk, or you can consciously accept that risk. What, what sort of risks do you mean there? I mean, um, those risks are associated with money laundering, with consumer protection, and, and things like mm -hmm. that. Uh, but our approach is, it is better to help new businesses and work hand in hand, consult them, and know them from the very beginning. And this is the way how you can handle uh, those risks. And it, it also proved that it can be a very successful way of, of uh, growing the industry. Uh, there are a lot of uh, new uh, working places uh, where salaries are high, where productivity is is high, so I think that is a good model uh, uh, to proceed, uh, not only in fintech industry, but also in other tech areas. Mm -hmm. If you have an ecosystem already in place, you just remove barriers and it will grow automatically. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's a great story. I know that you've done fabulously well as a regular visitor to Vilnius myself. I'm always impressed by the, the buzz there. and I did notice the New York Times listed it as one of the five hippest cities in the world. <laughs> so it must be doing something good. Minister, thank you very much for joining thank us today. You.